Building bridges to a brighter future, making connections for career success from industry experts. This session is focused on learning the value of constructive partnerships and employee relations from multiple business reps. Moderating this session is Wendy Wagner, the Career Ready Advisor and Program Manager at the Borough College of Communication. Wendy has a background in arts, natural resource education, and anthropology. As a lifelong learner, she has a drive to better understand how college students engage in transformative learning through experiential processes, building agency, and self-efficacy. Wagner is a doctoral candidate in education, curriculum, and instruction, focusing on learning through making. She has had a variety of career experiences and for the past several years has been a career advisor in higher education. She enjoys helping students lean into their strengths and see the value in their personal stories and experiences through the career exploration process. Please welcome Wendy Wagner. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Again, uh, just to review, um, I'm happy to welcome Jeff Hyatt from KHQ, Corey Hansom from Gray TV, Alex Evans from DH, and Melissa Luck from 4 News Now. Uh, Lisa Chavez could not be here. She was on the panel um, from KTVB uh, Boise. She is covering the Vallow trial. So. Um, such as news goes. Um, so yeah, so thank you and, and welcome today. So um, let's just kind of do a bit of a round robin here and uh, we'll start off with, could each of you talk about your current role and how long you've been in that role and why you chose that position? Want me to go? <laughs> I'll, I'll go. Uh, hi everybody. So. Uh, Jeff Hyde at KHQ. I'm based in Spokane, but our company now has 10 TV stations um, across the Northwest, three in Washington, seven in Montana. Uh, my title is Director of Recruiting and Training for our company. So I'm on the road. I was in Missoula last week, and I'm visiting all of our stations and working with our, our, our people at all of our stations in the news departments. Um, I started at KHQ many years ago, uh, 40 plus years ago. As a photographer, part-time photographer, and kind of worked my way up from there. So I'm kind of the rare, the rare person that's kind of spent their entire career at one station. So I worked up to chief photographer, and then I was an EP, and then I was assistant news director, and, and up and up. And then we got big enough, they, they asked me to do uh, recruiting and training. So that's, that's my background. Um, I'm Corey Hansen, and I am the regional vice president, uh, one of the regional vice presidents for Gray Television. I'm based in Portland, so I oversee, I'm the general manager there of the two stations that we have in Portland, but I oversee stations in Anchorage and Fairbanks, Alaska, Boise and Twin Falls, Idaho, and Cheyenne and Casper, Wyoming. Um, I, to like Jeff, um, started in Portland and have pretty much stayed my whole career in Portland. I spent a year um, in the Gulf Coast um, down in the south, but other than that, I've been in Portland. I came up the news side, so I was a producer, um, executive producer, spent some time as a creative services director news director, and then became a general manager. Good morning, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Alex Evans. I am a senior account director at DH. We are an integrated communications agency based in Spokane and also now in Seattle. Um, and I have been at DH for five and a half years now, um, and it was a bit of a career shift for me um, going to DH. Um, and I was moving from Washington, D.C. Um, I would say that I didn't so much choose the position as much as maybe it chose me and just kind of the, the right fit at the right time when I was moving to a new community. So um, yeah, I, I look forward to telling you more about, about DH and sort of my journey. Hi, I'm Melissa Luck. I'm with KXLY, 4 News Now in Spokane. Um, I have been in my role as the news director for about a little over five years. Um, I've been at KXLY for 20 years, this sounds really weird to say that, but yeah, 20 years at KXLY. Um, I, was, I came as a reporter, um, was a weekend anchor for a time and then moved into management. My first job was a reporter in the Tri-Cities. Um, I think being a reporter is the coolest job in the world, so if that's what you're trying to do, I say go for it. Um, <laughs> uh, much like Alex, I don't think that I cho chose to be a news director as much as, um, as it just kind of made sense. Um, and I'm happy that I'm doing it now, but it was, it was definitely not what I set out to do when I started out in this field. Um, but I oversee TV, uh, digital promotions, and um, you know, recruiting just for our station in Spokane. 
So I think we have a lot of uh, about to be graduating seniors mm -hmm. in the room. Just a simple yes or no answer. Um, did you did you all know what have an idea that you'd be doing this when you were in college about to graduate, mm -hmm. or is this a bit different? No. It's <laughs> 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 a no for me also. <laughs> News, no yes. Me. Management, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and a, new, a no for me as well. Great. So you never know. You never know. <laughs> um, so what are, um, what we can keep doing the round robin if you like. Uh, what is, um, what are some of the biggest challenges in your role? And what do you like most about it? What is most rewarding? I guess I should start now you since I defer to you yeah, before. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, the challenges are the, are the same challenges so many of you are facing. It's, it's the time that we're in, it's the pressure that we're under, it's the circumstances of the world and what's happened in the last few years. Um, I think, you know, challenges in, in news are all of those things and, and trying to decide, um, you know, what's most important at what time, you know, are you serving digital, you're serving social media, how are you doing all those things? Um, you know, none of those things really change from when you start out in this business to when you end up as a manager or a, a VP or all those things. Um, I think right now, as a manager, the biggest challenges are finding all of you. Um, I think every market would tell you right now they're they're struggling to find good people and get people in the right positions who want to do this job and want to do it for the right reasons. So that's kind of where our biggest challenges are. I think also, you know, managing mental health, not just yours, but ours as well. Um, that's that's so much more of a conversation than it was when we were all starting. It's more of a conversation than it was before the pandemic, to be honest. So, um, you know, kind of the day-to-day -day of making sure that um, we're covering the news and informing our communities, but also making sure that our people are okay, too. So I would say that's the biggest challenges. The biggest joy is the same thing. It's the people, right? It's, um, it's helping people grow. It's helping people find their potential. Um, it's helping people, you know, turn a corner into, like, going from doing the basics of their job to, like, you know, kind of hitting that next gear and really growing, and, and that, that's the most satisfying for me. I'll go. Um, I, I'm gonna echo a little bit of what Melissa said in the, in the sense that um, recruiting is, is one of the hardest things right now, and I think it's not just, just recruiting to find people, but to find people who are truly passionate about this business and who understand the power um, and the impact you can make in a position you have within a, within a new station. And I think that's been kind of one of the hardest things um, I think also the work-life balance and the expectations of people entering um, the business. I think the world has changed in the last three years um, due to the pandemic. And you know, a lot of industries and a lot of businesses do work from home and there's a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that's really hard in, in the news business to, um, to grant to people. And it's not because we wanna be jerks, um, but I think it's because it's, it's just what that experience in the building really helps and, and happens to create better, better news and better judgment. So discussion. So I think those are kind of the two biggest challenges I, I have seen. Um, I think people obviously are, are the, the best part of it. Um, I also think the impact that you can make in a community or in one person's life or, um, you know, to really see the results of, of what you do and the, and the power you do have when you can do good, it's a really great feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would reiterate uh, both of those comments. It's it's a challenge to find passionate people. Um, in my job, I'm kind of a, a, a cultivator of passion and potential. Um, the the years that I spent in the news department, I have a pretty good eye for maybe not where somebody is today, but where they could become and what they could could become, and so I can help people get there. Um, but it is it is a challenge to find passionate people we can we can all do the blocking and tackling and learn to tell stories there are different masters that you have to feed now broadcast digital different deadlines throughout the day that that comes with the the industry right now but uh, just people that are, are curious passionate about what they're doing and I'll just share a bit of a different perspective. I'm the non-news person <laughs> up here. Um, I would say the most challenging thing for, for me is um, being in a PR agency versus being in-house someplace. Um, there's just, there's so much demand for your time and attention um, instead of, you know, if you, and I, I don't know who here is in, in PR or marketing or advertising, but um, being in-house someplace, you have um, you know, one, uh, you know, one mission, one goal, one, one company that you're working
working for, being in an agency, um, kind of depending on the size of the agency and the kind of work that you do, you could have eight clients. And um, and it's just, you know, I, I think you mentioned work-life balance and um, you can set your week up and, and have a full week of meetings and flow blocks and think that you're gonna tackle everything and then you get a call from a client saying, we got something new. Um, or you get an email from a client saying, you delivered that thing and we thought it was great, but actually we want to change these three things about it. And it kind of blows up your world. And that's just what you have to expect actually. So that definitely took some adjustment um, being, at a, being at an agency. Wonderful, thank you. So um, if you can talk a little bit about the value of teams in your organizations and a little bit about your workplace culture, how that, how that adds to your daily routine and, and how meaningful that can be. I'd be happy to start because <laughs> I love the team that I work with. Um, we are 54 people now. Um, I think pre-pandemic we were about half that size, so we have grown a lot, um, which has also meant a, um, a new office in Seattle. Um, it's also it also means that we have um, some uh, some colleagues now who are outside of Washington State and living in other places, um, and I think that that um, is part of our part of our culture is really being able to. Um, be who you are, be where you want to be, um, and still be able to collaborate and do great work together. Um, I think that is probably the most exciting part of my job is um, the, the teams that I get to work with and the talent that people bring to the table and when we all come around the table, what that means for our clients and for the communities that we serve. Um, and I just think a really important part of that is having diverse perspectives um, on our team and um, how that is reflected in the work that we do and, and how we serve um, the audiences that, that we're seeking to reach. Um, I apologize if I've talked to some of your classes and you've heard this, but my newsroom rule, my newsroom motto is take care of the team. I stole it from Pete Carroll, and it's fine, it's fine, it's no big deal. Um, but that, to me, that defines what we do every day. That's like everything from, you know, we've got a lot of people from California that maybe can't drive in the snow, so it might be picking your, your coworker up from work. It means meeting your deadlines so you don't screw over producer. It means, you know, kind of being a soft place. News business is hard, and um, people are demanding, and it's it's all those things. So it's really important for us that in the newsroom it's a safe place, and people can you know know people have their backs. It also means you know challenging each other too, making sure we're doing the best work. But um, that kind of was forming before the pandemic, and in the pandemic it it meant everything. It meant like we have to take care of each other because people can't go home and see their families, and um, so that has really kind of defined who we are. Aside from you know doing good news and you know telling the truth and informing our communities all of those things are kind of a given but but for us it's it's that you know it's made it close-knit I know it's like it's weird now to say it's like a family people are like don't say that because it sounds weird to young people but um, <laughs> but it, it kind of is in a way in that um, you know you spend a lot of really intense moments with your coworkers in every situation but really in news a lot of really difficult circumstances so knowing that um, we're taking care of each other. And that goes all the way up to, you know, to our, our company and our general manager, and, um, and that's, that's really important. We kind of have a no a-hole rule because of that, um, but, um, but they don't like me to put that on the board in the newsroom <laughs> or anything, so. I'm glad you brought up driving. Um, we uh, had a, a, a person just starting as a reporter at our station in Billings, literally didn't have her driver's license. So I took her out and, and we, talked about driving and driving in the snow and things like that. She rode her bike to work until the snow started flying in Billings and then we helped her buy a car. So, you know, I kind of became newsroom dad a little bit, like here's what you want, here's what you don't want, how do you feel about Subaru, how do you feel, you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> um, but um, at, at all of our places, whether it's Spokane or Billings or Tri-Cities, we have kind of a buddy system and we, assign uh, newer folks a veteran person. It might be how to fill out your time card. It might be where, where do I go for this, that, or the other? Where do I park? Anything like that. Um, we've got a great mix at all of our shops um, of, of people that are just starting out and veterans. So, you know, what are your thoughts on this? How can I do this better? Um, right in the newsroom. And so I, I think that's, you know, no matter where you wind up, what field you, go into ultimately, I think that look for that. I think that the workplace culture is such an important um, part of your search. 
for your first employer. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, you spend a lot of time there, as Melissa said. I mean, you know, maybe we're not, don't think of us as family, but maybe think of us as your social social mm -hmm. circle. Um, you know, but, but you really do, and I think, um, you know, talking to people who have been there, talking to people who aren't there anymore, <clears throat> um, talking to the leadership team, because those people are really the ones interact with and, and spend a lot of time with and they're going to impact you um, you know your emotional health your mental health mm -hmm. your you know professional health all of that is going to come from those people and I think it's so important um, for us you know in, in our newsroom it's really about um, approachability it's about accountability and you don't have to be a jerk to hold people accountable um, you know you don't have to be berated in a newsroom um, you know if expectations are set clearly I think everybody works towards a common goal in a much better way mm -hmm. and we really try try to establish that um, you know oh, also want you to enjoy coming to work it's I mean we always say it's not always going to be a great day um, you know some of the stuff you're going to cover is going to be hard and it's not going to be fun and it's not going to be positive but at the end of the day if you can find a little bit of joy and you can walk through that door at least you know the next day hopefully you'll have that and so that's been really important um, and I think you know at great television has 113 stations across the country and it all really comes down to creating a good culture and then helping those people once you get them in the door stay within the company and continue to grow. So someone that starts in, in market 196 doesn't have to stay in market 196, right? You can grow, you can grow, you have those opportunities. Um, and if you're good and you're in market 196, you're not punished to have to stay there. Um, you know, you do get to move out and, and I think that that's all about, you know, helping people grow. And it's nice to see your team socialize together, right? I mean, we all see all the social media. We know that people are hanging out together after work. So that, you know, if you've ever worked in a restaurant, I mean, you're, you're tight. And so you're tight with your coworkers. Um, you all, you're all living the same experiences, the same hours, the tough shifts, the weather, the whatever. And so it's nice to see people doing things together and, and kind of, I don't want to say commiserating together, but, you know. They're commiserating. They're kind of commiserating <laughs> together, right? So, yeah. I feel like that's a, that's a really good point to bring up, I think, for this particular group of folks who have had school during the pandemic and haven't come together in the same ways in college that a lot of other students when we were students we were able to and I think that that is going to be something that you all will need to lean into probably in a, in a new and different way um, and I think that it really is on, on um, the workplace to create opportunities and, and create a space where you do feel like you, you want to be there and you are connected. Um, I think that's just something that I, I've seen at our company um, really trying to create those social opportunities and um, but uh, yeah I, I just I want to recognize that um, that might feel a little bit different to you and then um, you'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> So I hear you all either say, or talk about passion or just kind of infer um, wanting candidates that have passion with them. And that can mean a lot of different layers that can include work ethic and energy and, and those sorts of things. Um, so when you're, when you're prioritizing, when you're hiring candidates, is there one specific thing that you really look for? other than passion that's, um, that stands out. Um, it could be, and I'm kind of combining my questions here, but <laughs> I meet with a lot of students that, you know, are applying for an internship and they maybe haven't had that industry experience yet, but you have to start somewhere. They've maybe worked in retail and customer service or um, worked in food and beverage, that kind of thing. Or they already have an internship or that they've got in their background. Is there anything specific that stands out to you in candidates, other, including those things, or or other the, other than that, when you're when you're considering hiring? Um, I would say I have two. I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think initiative and curiosity. Um, you know, you're, no one's going to come up and ask you in a newsroom what you want to do. People are going to wait. I mean, it's it's a busy place, and we're on, you're on deadlines, and um, you know, you've got a lot of a lot of personalities. And so, I think the initiative to 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 want to do something, to pitch it for yourself, to come up with an idea, to to do a little extra work, to stay a little longer without being asked, goes a long, long way. Um, and I think curiosity, as Jeff mentioned earlier, it's, it's been my, my big thing lately. Um, you know, just people, we want people who are curious, curious to figure out why, right? Don't just tell me the facts. I mean, anyone can tell us, you know, the who, what, where, you know, but, but why or what's unique or what's that emotional element or who's that, who's that human interest part. The curiosity to know more starts with, with you and then, and then is seen by everybody else. So those would be mine. I think, yeah, curiosity and, and skepticism. I mean, we, we talk all the time about, you know, you, you need, 
you have to be comfortable challenging what somebody tells you. Mm -hmm. um, most of you and most of the people that work in our newsroom are just nice, good people. They're like, so if somebody says, hey, this is the, the mayor says, this is the thing going on, you're like, okay, that seems legit. Um, I, you know, you gotta be comfortable pushing back on some of these things and, and understanding that you can do that without being antagonistic and you can do that and, and that, that's what being a good reporter is. Um, so being comfortable doing that. Curiosity is such a huge thing. We see people all the time who come in the newsroom and everyone's talking about something. Oh, did you see this? Blah, 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 blah. And then we have our morning meeting. It's like, anyone have any ideas? And no one pitches it. Or the like, producers are all talking about it and it's not in the newscast. I'm like, y'all, we're just talking about this for 15 minutes. Like, how does what you're seeing in the world translate to what you're putting in a newscast? I think you talk about other experiences. I think it's tricky in Pullman. It, maybe it's different. I, I didn't go to school here. My husband did 20 plus years ago. Um, but it was hard to do an internship during the school year because you guys are far away from TV stations, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've also talked to Division One athletes who are like, I can't do an internship because I'm being this Division One athlete, right? So um, what else are you doing in your life to show that you're curious and you're passionate about this field, whatever the field is? I always ask reporters when I interview them, who's your favorite report? Like, who's your favorite journalist? And if people are like, oh, I don't really know, I'm like, that's a huge red flag. Like, are you watching the thing that you're trying to do? Um, so, you know, curiosity, how does that translate? Um, and, and whether you're doing something in a newsroom or you're doing something in a different job or something because you need to make money doing it, I get that. But how are you showing in other ways that you're interested in, in doing this professionally? And the, I'll take it a step further. The, the curiosity doesn't have to be in some big investigation where you're going to FOIA documents and dig into this thing for months. It doesn't have to be that. It could be just curious, curious about the world around you. It might be like, wow, I really noticed this spring, I drive this way to work every day, and I've really noticed this year that the potholes are really bad on this stretch of road. Well, it, it turns into an organic, you've probably seen it a hundred times, Melissa, it turns into an organic conversation in the, uh, the morning meeting, and next thing you're leading the five o'clock news with a story about potholes and what the city's doing. Well, it just started from somebody being, wow, it seems really bad this year. And it can be a hundred things like that. It can, be, it can be graffiti on buildings. It can be anything, just being curious about the world around you. Hey, they're digging up dirt over there on that lot that I drive by, I wonder what's going in there, right? Um, the other thing that I look for, I have two, uh, the other thing that I look for is kind of a well-rounded person. Like what, I look at a lot of resumes, right? And it's like, what else are you doing? What else have you got going on in your life? Are you an RA? Do you have a part-time job? Do you have an internship? Wow, that tells me you, you're pretty good at time management. Mm -hmm. You got a hundred things going at once. That's, that's a good thing. Um, so, you know, that's maybe not everybody, but when I see that, it kind of tells me, you know, this person was a, a scout or they volunteer here or there. I, I kind of like well-rounded people, so. Yeah, I'll actually just echo, echo that. I think for, for us, it's really um, looking at the whole person. And I think um, part of that is the technical skills, writing skills that you would bring um, out the gate, but also the aptitude um, that you, we know that you could learn and grow. And that really um, goes to that curiosity piece is just <coughs> wanting to always um, learn and grow and things are constantly changing in our industry. So being curious about that. But when I think about the whole person, I, I think about um, the, the question of um, an internship. Yes, that's great um, if you've had an internship, but also if you're a student athlete or if you have worked at the rec center or maybe you work on your family's farm in the summer, that's all important experience mm -hmm. and part of like what you bring to the table. And I think um, the, the other piece of that is, is really just lived experience. And as we are um, at DH trying to um, diversify our workforce, so, um, it's really around um, us being um, uh, representative of the communities that we seek to serve and so I think um, I, I would just encourage all of you as you go into interviews really bring your full self like don't think that it's just the things that live on a resume that explain who you are and and what you um, can bring to an agency or a newsroom um, it's it's really all of the things that um, have been part of your life that make you you and um, inform your perspective and your lens and and your talents wonderful um, I'd like to pause here for just a second and see if anyone in the audience has a question. Let's see. I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, oh. I, <laughs> All right. Well, we've got some folks that are remote too, so I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna work the floor here, walk the mic around. 
Can you hold that thought one moment? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, testing, testing. Um, I'm Laura, great to meet you all. I'm from the Wazoo Everett Extension campus, as well as my friend Xavier here. We flew out of SeaTac to get here, and it's awesome to be here today. Great to meet you all. Um, my, I have two questions. One is, is there a specific story that you covered, maybe someone that you met, group of people, just like a specific situation where it really made an emotional impact on you? There's a lot, um, <laughs> a lot. And, and some of them are the big stories. Um, Jeff covered the same, the with awful murders in um, North Idaho about 15 years ago. A family was murdered and their children were kidnapped. So, so this, don't ask me this, it's gonna be so depressing, right? <laughs> yeah. God. Um, that, that was one of those that um, I think changed an entire community. It was one of those like, um, it, was a, it was a random stranger. It was like the boogeyman actually came to the, you know. Um, that to me was an impactful story because it was a big story, but also because um, it, there were, over the course of literally 15 years of covering this, huge cracks in the system that could have prevented this, all these things. Um, that was emotional. I, I think too, I think of a story I did my, my first job in the Tri-Cities when a um, man killed his wife, awful domestic violence story, and I remember sitting in their house and the whole family was there, it was like 40 people, and I was 21 years old. I'm like, I'm so out of my league here. Um, but I'll never forget it, I'll never forget their names, and just not long ago, their son, who was a baby at the funeral, reached out and was like, I saw the story that you did on my mom, and um, he, he actually had a lot of questions I couldn't answer, but I think that was one of those things where, I think about those two stories as, you know, we, we all talked about being in our positions for a long time. A lot of people move around in this business, and that's all good, like I get that. Um, Dan covered the groaning story too, he's in the back there, yeah. <laughs> um, you don't forget these stories, but when you stay in the same community and you can see the impact of that years later mm -hmm. and you can put that into perspective, when the awful murders happened in Idaho, we immediately were like, okay, there's parallels to this other story mm -hmm. because you can add context that you can't add if you're moving around from market to market. I'm all for moving around market to market too, but, um, but I think to really understand the impact on a community, it, it happens when you're staying somewhere longer. That's way long of an answer, but that's, <laughs> I, I could keep going, but it would all be terribly horrific, so. All right, let's go to our reporter here who knows how to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hi guys, Damien Alvarado, broadcast journalist here in the Murrow College. Um, so my question uh, for you guys is, uh, especially like the new site, um, the Spokane area, used to be like a second, third market in the past, but can you kind of just talk about what the change has been and why you're taking like entry level or college students now? I'll, I'll just try to make it quick on my end. It's because markets bigger than ours are hiring people with that used to come to Spokane as their second job. Um, there's a little bit of a reach down that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, there's, I, I struggle with it. I, not that not that people coming out of school aren't ready. We've had some superstars come through that I'm like that are better than people that it's their second or third job. Um, but I do worry sometimes when people. Uh, I've seen people go right from school to like a mid 40s market, and I'm mm -hmm. like, I just uh, they're gonna. I, I worry they're gonna burn out. They're gonna make mistakes and a really tough situation. They're also going to go to a newsroom where everyone's 20 years older than them and has nothing in common with them and doesn't want to hang out with them. Um, so I think, but I also think there's something to be said for um, the really good college journalism programs that are out there and how the skills that you guys are getting and how we can lean into that and, um, and you know, find, like Jeff said, you're hiring a potential when we're hiring somebody right out of school. So um, you swing and miss sometimes, but, um, but I think it's, the, the market absolutely has changed from where it was before. Yeah, I would, I would, uh give you well a couple examples I was talking to a candidate for for KHQ in Spokane uh, she was about to graduate from a college on the East Coast and she signed a contract with market 24 right out of college um, I think what Melissa said is spot-on it starts at the top down so it's kind of a top-down thing um, you know Spokane's a kind of a unique market it's big medium size and but the trajectory used to be years ago small medium big right people did three steps and they got to a big market and they stayed in seattle and retired there or denver or wherever um now they kind of go small to big um and sometimes when they're good and they come out of a good school maybe not everybody but when they're good and they come out of a good school good program like this they can start in a medium-sized market where whether it's spokane or someplace else maybe you can speak to that as far as gray yeah, so um, we, I mean, we definitely see that and um, being one of the larger gray markets um, in Portland, 
we definitely get a lot of heat from our smaller markets that um, you know say stop hiring um, right out of college, um, but we need people to run our you know to help us get our newsrooms together. Um, and and I think we're really um, aware of what we're doing. I think it's to me it's it's not. I mean yes, it's market size. I, I mean to be honest, I was an intern. I started in Portland as an intern. I didn't leave Portland um, except for to be a GM. Um, and, and I had a great story, but not every story act, you know, turns out that way. I think it's about the person. I think mm -hmm. it's about the newsroom or the building you're gonna be a part of. It all makes a difference. So to say you have to go to a small market, to say you have to go to a big market, I don't think that that's necessarily, but I do agree with Melissa that there are some, you know, you have to be cognizant of what and who you're hiring and what kind of market and newsroom you're walking into, because it, it can be a lot. Um, you know, we have hired, um, We've hired three, four people from WSU right out of college after the symposiums. I mean, in May, people have started after we've met them here, um, and they've all been great. Um, we're, we're pretty particular about what positions we put them in um, because we want to help make sure you succeed and you don't burn out and you're not, you know, angry and you're not, you know, left without a job after a month or two. Um, and it's been it's been good for us, but it is. I mean, we're market 22. I can tell you a story. We talked to a producer candidate who was a junior in college, and she had already signed a contract at Dallas to produce once she was um, out of out of school. So she still had a year and a half left. So oh, wow. it just is that push down that mm -hmm. bigger markets are, are taken, you know, because there's just fewer people entering entering the business. And um, so the more of you, the more passionate you are, and you continue to fight the fight. That'll <laughs> hopefully change a little bit. <laughs> we definitely have some. Is my mic on? Can you hear me? You're okay. Good. We definitely have some uh, public relations interests, strategic communication students, and that goes for the stations as well, too. Can you address a, a little bit about the hiring um, at PR firms and, and what that market looks like um, in this day? And then we'll, we'll take some more audience questions. Sure. Yeah, I, I can really um, speak best to to our organization, DH, um, we, um, well, one one place I would start is that we do have an apprenticeship program. Um, we are typically um, doing six month apprentice apprenticeships twice a year. Um, and some it's either usually one or two apprentices at a time. Um, and so uh, typically we're like um, a, a spring, um, sorry, a winter, spring, and then a summer, fall. This year our timing's a little bit different, but um, I think that that's always a great way to start. And that doesn't have to be something that you do while you're in college. You certainly could be um, a, a senior in college or um, even um, potentially in your junior year. Um, but we have had um, some great apprentices that have come um, right out of college. Um, it's not always a pipeline to to a job necessarily. We're just not a large enough agency to be able to continually hire people every six months. But um, but it, it is a, a great opportunity um, uh, to just get get some experience. Um, I would say um, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we've grown a lot in the last couple years. Um, I, I don't know if we'll see as much growth um, in the next couple years as we have in the last two, but um, all signs are pointing to we, we are growing, and I know that many of you may be um, in, uh, in the PR field or marketing and more on what, I, what we would say um, at, at DH is um, at, on the account services side, so more of the, the project manager, the um, strategist, but we also have a creative department where we have um, graphic designers, art directors, writers, a video producer, um, and that's a team that we um, that we have been growing over the past few years also. Um, we also have a media buy team, so um, we have um, a couple folks who in-house do all of our um, media placements, trafficking for all of the paid media that we do on behalf of our clients. Um, so there's there's you know a, a few different opportunities kind of depending on what your talents are and your interests are. Thank you very much. Yeah, it kind of illustrates the variety at, at all your locations and opportunities. Thank you. Um, so as journalism evolves, we sort of see uh, like broadcast and print and web all merging together in a lot of places. Um, how have you seen that at your companies? And are there a lot of opportunities in writing for the web and for print? Yes, you're hired <laughs> immediately. No, um, yeah, it, 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 it's good perspective that you have. It really is doing a little bit of everything. Um, and that was like a bigger deal when we were all starting and like the, you know, the website, now I have to write separately for the website. Now it's just integrated in people's workflow. Mm -hmm. um, but that is, that's a huge opportunity, whether it's writing on the website or, um, 
or any kind of like digital social media, that kind of thing. Um, this, that's where we really lean on a lot of younger people too, because like I'll give you a quick example. We had a, a Murrow grad in the winter. I have no concept of time. And he came in and he's like, I, have you, do you guys do anything on TikTok? I'm like, you know what, me doing anything on TikTok. I'm too old, I can't figure it out, whatever. Um, and he's like, can I try it? And I was like, yes. And he's like, should I come up with a plan? I'm like, no, just do it. You know, there are strengths that you guys can bring and perspective you can bring from, you guys have all been creating content like your whole lives without thinking of it. So um, all of those things, yes, are, the demand is everywhere for all those things. And I think in most jobs, most newsrooms, um, they're not super siloed anymore. It's like, you're not like the web team is in a different building and the digital team, you know, the social team is here. It's like, okay, everyone's doing all of these things all the time. So ton of opportunities, yeah. I think we look at it as trying to create your brand and create a connection to the brand no matter which platform you're on, right? So it's that it's utilizing TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or broadcast or you know CTV or whatever it is, but it's about pre creating your brand and that connection on the platform that people are at. Okay. Uh... Hi, good morning. I'm Amy. I'm a student at Murrow, and I'm majoring in advertising. And I was just wondering, um, post-college, when you guys kind of knew when your career path was right for you, or if that's what you were passionate in. Well, I could start. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I, I, as I said, I've been at DH doing PR-ish um, stuff for, uh, for five and a half years. Right out of college, I was I'm a mail carrier for the United States Postal Service. Then I moved to New York City, and I was a nanny, and I worked at a gym. Then I worked on a cruise ship, <laughs> and then I worked at the White House and the Pentagon. Wait, what? And then I moved Wait, to totally normal. Path. Needle scratch. So, yeah. let, I, and, and I, if I could say one thing, and I don't know if, the, if you'll ask this question later, but to me, that was my 20s and my early 30s, and I wouldn't change a thing about it. And I don't want to like deter you guys from connecting with these folks and getting right into something that you're passionate about. But if you feel like, gosh, I just need to like explore the world a little bit, like please do it. Um, for me, I love where I've landed now, and I was, I think, 35 when I started at DH 34, um, and and I love. I love where I'm at now, um, but I don't think I would be the person that I am in the job that I am if I didn't do all of those other things first. So that's my like off the wall <laughs> answer for you. And maybe these other folks <laughs> would say something different. <laughs> maybe about four well, years. That, uh, well, yeah, well I, yeah, I'm the I'm I'm the the rare guy. I responded to my first news story on horseback. So you know, I've been there a while. Um, <laughs> did newscasts on the Mayflower. I could, I could go on. Um, but I would just say look for a company where you can grow, because that's what's kept me at KHQ. Besides being a Spokane uh, guy through and through, um, I've stayed there so long because they keep throwing stuff at me. And what about this? What about this? What about this? And so whether you, you know, wind up at a TV station or an ad agency or whatever, just look for a place where, with huge growth opportunities. I'll, I'll say too, I mean, when you ask if we knew our career, I don't know what my career path is now, I'm 44. Like I have no idea what's coming, you know? Um, and I think that there's something really to be said for having these adventures and going somewhere mm -hmm. you don't think you're gonna go. I talk to so many people coming out of school that are like, two years, like a contract is two years. I'm like, y'all don't know how fast two years will go. Yeah. You're not, it's not prison, right? <laughs> it shouldn't be, shouldn't be. Um, but it will go so fast. And then I have people who are like, gosh, I kind of want to do something else or I want to travel, but what if I cannot come back to news? I'm like, one, you probably won't because <laughs> people rarely come back. But two, whatever that job is, you know, just because you leave and try something else doesn't mean you can't get back on that path. So I would say it's important to have goals and like where you want to be, but um, don't get so locked into it because you'll just, I think you'll be shocked where, where life can take you if you just kind of let it, you'll be at the White House as on a cruise. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and let's talk about the two-year deal because I hear that a lot, right? And, and that's two back-to-school seasons. It's two winters. It's two whatevers. It's two bloomsdays in Spokane. It just goes by really fast. So don't think, oh my God, what am I going to do? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a snap. I'd also just offer that all of you are building the skills to be great communicators, and you can do that in any industry, anywhere. So mm -hmm. if you are interested in agriculture, 
but you are a communicator, you can be a communicator in agriculture. Mm -hmm. If you um, are a college athlete and you want to report sports, you can be a sports reporter. So just take the skills that you have and connect them with your passions. And your passions might change. You might start in one place and then decide that you want to be someplace else. Um, but what the skills that you have as communicators, everyone needs across the board. Absolutely. Um, so take those with you. And, and, and it goes back to that mm -hmm. curiosity and continuing to grow. Um, just keep refining those skills as, as you move on. And career, I'm, I'm sorry, careers are not linear. They don't go from A to Z. They go here, you meet somebody, you go down this cul-de-sac, it doesn't work, you come back. <laughs> Right? So doors open, you meet people, you like this, you find out you don't like that as much. I mean, they don't necessarily go from here to there. They, they kind of jog and weave. So. I love this. I'm just going to play this video for all my career advising appointments now. <laughs> <laughs> so I got time for a couple more questions. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I teach public speaking, DEI, stereotypes. Those are some of the classes I teach for Murrow. Uh, I try to take pride, uh, you know, in this business to impart knowledge on my students on the true process of getting a job. Because I think there's this, there's this uh, idea that you're just going to go to Indeed, you're going to submit your resume, you're going to get a call, and then you're going to start like in two weeks, right? <laughs> so I would like some you to impart some knowledge to us. What's the, what is the true specific nature of how you recommend? Do we need to? have our students recruit inside out? Do they really just need to go on a job platform and you're gonna look at a resume, they're gonna get a call? I think that this requires some complex layers, you know, because today it's very competitive. And I always try to tell my students that they need to get to know people in the company first because it's uh, ultra competitive. So I just wanna know from your perspective, what, what is your advice on if they are graduating and they wanna get a job, do they just go to Indeed and apply? or what's the best way to make a connection to actually get an interview? I, I will say, I, I would like people to just apply for the job. I mean, there's so much now, and maybe this is just me, where we're reaching out the other way. It's totally the opposite of when we were looking for jobs, and you're like, I mean, literally putting VHS tapes in the mail and like sending them across the country and um, paying for postage, you know? Um, now we're, we're going out a lot more. There's a reason that companies have, you know, recruiters and those types of things that didn't have before. So I've reached out to people and they say, oh my gosh, I would love Spokane. I love that. I, I'm like, well, you, we got all these jobs open. You can apply for some of them. So some of it is as simple as just applying. But making those connections is huge. And you never know when that connection is going to pay off. We, had a, we met a student at the symposium, I don't know, five years ago. My husband sat down with her in the one-on-one -on -one session. We didn't hire her right away. She was a junior at the time. She ended up going to another market. We had a job open, and he walked in. I mean, he's my husband, and he's our morning anchor, so he kind of had an open door in a professional way. But anyway, but he came in, and he said, hey, and I'll say her name because she's wonderful. And you know, she, he said, hey, Nikki Torres is looking for a job. Remember, we met her at the symposium, and she was really great. And he said, over the years, she keeps asking for feedback over and over. I'm like, yes. So we hired her. And now she's moved on and was in Portland, and now she's in Seattle. Um, but those connections and hanging on to those is huge. Networking is not fun for a lot of people, but just one little moment. Um, we've hired people that we tried to hire years ago, and now they come back and say, hey, I really want to work for you. Um, so you never know. But I, some of it is as basic as applying for the job. Hi, my name can't hear it. Uh, name's Justin Tree. Uh, earlier, you guys mentioned you want people who are passionate about the job, but I, so my focus is kind of the sports realm. So in that sense and other senses, how do we balance our passion with the objectivity that the news expects of us? Say if it's we're covering the expansion of a women's league, all this new pioneering, how do we temper our excitement and focus on what needs to be reported? I guess uh, channel the passion, right? I mean, if you're if you're excited enough about, especially, I mean, I think sports is so specific to this. If you're passionate about sports and you're working in sports, you don't have to pretend like you're not a fan of the sport that you're covering or whatever. I think I think channel that passion into how would you tell someone? Because most of the people that are watching local news are not massive sports fans; they're casual sports fans. So how can you take all these things that you know because you're passionate about something and turn it into something that is tangible for like? you know, your grandma, 
like sitting, you know, sitting at home. I, I always use the example of Gonzaga. Like people watch WCU football, same thing. I tell our sports reporters, I'm a huge WCU football fan. But when I listen to a pregame radio show or whatever, and they say, hey, the three keys to the game are this, and then I go to the game, and I'm like, you know, the outside receivers are the key to this game. I don't know what I'm, I, I'm just regurgitating somebody else's info, right? So I think if you just channel that passion into what, what does the average viewer need to hear from that, then you can still be passionate and, and like, your, like your team and your sport. I will say, if you're going into sports, just know that it may make you not like the teams that you like as much, too, because mm -hmm. sometimes you, you kind of see you know, the inside workings of some things. But I don't think you have to turn that off. Um, I just think you have to think about how to channel that into just being the expert in that. Mm -hmm. And know that in news, we're not the experts in most of what we're covering. Like, we're not ex I, my first job was in the Tri-Cities, and then they're like, you're going to cover nuclear waste. And I'm like, I'm going to who to what? <laughs> um, but it was a matter of saying, like, OK, I'm just passionate about learning something. But in sports, you're passionate about it because you love it. So just find a way to make that tangible for the person that's watching. And I would add, quality storytelling is quality storytelling. Good, good storytelling is good storytelling. The platform comes later. So if you're in you know, Butte, Montana, and a kid, a high school kid broke the high jump record for the state, and you want to tell that story, go tell that story and talk to mom and dad and talk to the coach and talk to the kid and get them at practice. And maybe there's home video that, when they were at state and, you know, craft a really good story. You are all absolutely wonderful. Um, I really appreciate you being here today. Um, and I thank you for all your questions. I wish I had. I wish we had another couple hours <laughs> with you. However, I do have good news. Um, are all of you folks sticking around? Will you be here tomorrow as well? Mm -hmm. So we do have a time tomorrow afternoon from 1.30 to 3.30. If you want to sign up for a time or stop by and meet with any of these folks, or I encourage you to take advantage of symposium as a networking opportunity. I can't emphasize that enough. Shake hands with folks. Uh, we ha happen to have. Pat uh, from KIRO, Cairo in the back as well. So there's um, a lot of folks on our panels, but also wandering around here. So use those networking skills, your elevator pitch. I hope you all practice that. <laughs> if you don't have it practiced, you can come see me over at that table and we'll work on it. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you all for being here today. And let's do one more question. When you were about to graduate, what's the one thing you wish you knew back then that you know now? And I think some of you kind of alluded to that, uh, kind of, um, but yeah, that's a, a tough one, but. I think I, I think I wish I knew that you didn't have to do it right away, which is terrible advice to give because we want to hire all of you, but um, <laughs> I ended up graduating a semester early because I was like, I've already learned everything, I want to do this. And now I'm like, God, I should have taken a year and like, you know, I, I probably would have ended up in the same place, but I think just taking that time and you guys are so from the time you're young, you're like so driven and you're accomplishing so many things. Um, but if we're trying to hire you, don't take any time off. But <laughs> the rest of you, you can. I think I think you don't have to. You know, you should know that you don't have to know and have it all figured out right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may get a job and it may be awesome, and you may take a job and you may hate it. And right, I mean, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. It doesn't mean that your career wasn't the right. You know, your your, your degree wasn't the right thing for you. Um, it just means you're going to find a different path and take that kind of cul de sac, you know, track and, and make some detours, but you're going to end up where you're going to supposed to be. Um, and just have that faith, because I think so many people, um, especially in your guys' generation, feel like, you know, you're supposed to be totally buttoned up. You have to know exactly what you want to do. I mean, I, you know, I would have never, ever told you that I was going to end up in broadcasting, let alone in news, let alone as a producer, let alone as a general manager. I mean, you just don't know, and it's okay to not know. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's kind of a plug for maybe starting in some place that maybe is a little smaller than you'd like. It's okay to make mistakes, but you know they're probably not going to be fond of that in Seattle or Portland, but it's okay to do that in Missoula for a minute and then move up from there. That's okay. I would just say, say yes to opportunities. And the more you find yourself saying yes, the more you're going to explore and know who you are and what you're capable of. And it will help you continue to craft what that path is going to be for you, whether it is down a cul-de-sac and back around. Um, if you, if, if you um, get in the habit of saying yes to opportunities, I just think that you will have 
a richer life and a, and a richer career experience. Wonderful. Well, Jeff, Corey, Alex, and Melissa, thank you all for being here today and um, sharing your knowledge with us. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Now, which of station is yours in Portland? Uh, Fox 12. Okay, okay. We got a lot of Spokane people at Fox 12. I, well, there used to be anyway. I don't know anymore, but I think Kelsey Watts was there. For Kelsey Watts was there. We got so many we people getting Drew out of the business. All, 